Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking all about sweet, delicious gourmand perfumes. If you like to smell irresistible, this is the video for you. And it's been highly requested, so I finally went through my collection, pulled out all of my favorites. They're sitting right here on my little side table. These are incredible, especially going into fall winter when it's a bit cooler outside since they're kind of warm, sensual, snuggly perfumes. They have foody notes, so think honey, chocolate, vanilla, baked goods, just ooey gooey makes your mouth water. And a couple of these are really great for transitioning from summer to fall as well. So they're a bit warm and beachy, but still so yummy. I'm starting with a new discovery to me and a new addition to my collection that was love at first sniff. It was blown away, head exploded. How have I not heard about this fragrance before? I know that's very dramatic, but truly, this has been one of my favorite new discoveries because I've done a couple blind buy perfume hauls lately. They've gone really well. I will continue to do them in the future, but I've smelled a lot of fragrances that are nice. They're good. They're not great. They're not really standouts in my collection. Well, I would consider this to be a standout and I did request this from Twisted Lily. It was a recommendation, so I should have known it was going to be good. It's Sandal Sun from Hermetica. It's a molecular brand and this is an alcohol-free formula. So as soon as you spray the fragrance, you're immediately in the heart notes. If you like sandalwood, if you love vanilla, this is the perfume for you. I think this works great for summer, summer evenings, summer date nights. Leaves your skin smelling delicious, but could also take you through fall, depending on where you live and just your mood and what kind of perfumes you like to wear. I like a beachy tropical fragrance, not really tropical. Tropical is not the right word, but definitely drops you in the middle of paradise somewhere. Think of that luxurious resort getaway in the middle of winter when things are too cold and you fly south. This would be the perfume to pack in your bag. I think this description says it best. It's a celebration of the brightness and oriental heat of the sun. The fragrance is wrapped by the warmth of pure vanilla extract with the sweet caress of hazelnut accord. Myrrh essence adds an earthy deepness to the scent. Like a sweet, lazy day under the sun, Sandal Sun explores woody and gourmand notes. Perfect description. I am planning on wearing this again today, but because we have other fragrances to smell, I'm gonna spray it on the blotter for now. Heaven. It's so nice. It's very bright when you first spray it. Mm, but the dry down is perfect. It's not too sweet. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not too sweet. But if you like hazelnut, vanilla, and sandalwood, this is your perfume. It smells edible, but very beachy and relaxing at the same time. It's elegant, sophisticated. I think this would be the perfect transition fragrance from summer to fall. And really, you could layer with it something a bit spicier for fall winter months if you really wanted to, because there's a softness to it. Not soft as in it doesn't project and it has terrible sillage, but a softness and just, soft is probably not the word. Maybe not soft, but smooth because it has the vanilla and the woody notes. Mmm, smells incredibly smooth, almost velvety. But there is a light airiness to it. It's not overpowering. It's not a heavy, deep, woody fragrance. I know it says myrrh essence to give it an earthy vibe. Doesn't smell earthy, doesn't smell dirty. It still has a light souffle, bouncy quality, which is nice because I know that this is not going to give me headache. Well, I know it's not going to give me headache because I've been wearing it for the past couple of days, but it doesn't smell like one of those fragrances that you smell and you think, ooh, that smells good. But do I want to smell that on myself an hour or two hours from now? Will that be too much and induce a headache? Not like that. It's perfect. To me, this is a hidden gem among hidden gems. Now, I did read incredible reviews, so perhaps it's not that hidden, but I just discovered it. And if you like this style of fragrance and this sounds interesting to you, seek this perfume out. You will not be disappointed. It was a wow. Wow, 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 right off the bat. 
Here's another perfume that works really nicely as a transition from summer to fall. And I know I've talked about this quite a bit. I was afraid if I started with 51, you guys would mutiny and jump ship. But it's Roja 51 Parfum. I also have the Essence, which is a little bit lighter. I love both of them. But I do think this one packs a bit of a punch. So it definitely works as for summer, for fall, winter. To me, this is sunset in a bottle. It just smells, not again, not tropical, but beachy. But the notes in this fragrance are very edible. It just makes your mouth water as soon as I list them, which I will in a moment. I love this fragrance so much. I would say this is probably my number one favorite fragrance at the moment. I know that's a bold statement. I have so many different favorites, but there's just something about it. You know, our favorites are our favorites. We can't help ourselves. So I couldn't not talk about this perfume. It just speaks to me. I wanna wear it all the time. I wanna bathe in it. This is the quintessential irresistible perfume. It has a top note of bergamot, middle notes include raspberry, gardenia, tuberose, rose, orange blossom, jasmine, lily of the valley, base notes, what is left lingering on your skin, vanilla, cashmere wood, violet leaf, anise, patchouli, sandalwood, and clove. It's categorized as an amber perfume. Hmm. I guess because it has bergamot and some fruity notes in there, it's kind of tropical, sort of reminds me of a pina colada initially, but as it dries down, it is just so yummy, so smooth. There's a sweetness that I think comes from the fruity notes like the raspberry, but mixed with the clove and the vanilla and the sandalwood, it just becomes so dreamy, very smooth and just delicious and it's very sensual. This is a seductive perfume, perfect for a date night, evening. It's not so heavy and spicy. It's not so obvious that you couldn't wear it daytime, but that is definitely the mood. It is a very romantic perfume. The rest of these perfumes lean very fall winter in my opinion. Of course, you can wear whatever you want, whenever you want. And this is another new favorite that is actually an old classic, Angelique Noir from Guerlain. When I first smelled this fragrance, I had the same reaction as the previous two. Wow, oh my goodness, that is amazing. Of course, I think that was probably the case for all of these fragrances. It is incredible. Now, I have to point out that not all of these fragrances are categorized as gourmands. Check the little box. I've created this list based on my experience with the fragrance, how it wears on my skin, the dry down. Is it creamy, velvety, baked goods deliciousness? If it is, then I've included it on the list. Top notes are angelica, pear, and pink pepper. Middle notes are jasmine and caraway. Base notes are angelica, vanilla, and cedar. This is also one of the most elegant fragrances on the list. I included this in my bridal perfume video. Oh, so good. So right away, there is a little bit of a crispy green quality. This is definitely a grown woman's fragrance. It is incredibly elegant. I think you would have to be dressed up, maybe a special occasion. I do think this is more of a date night, perhaps a wedding black tie affair, some sort of big gala event type of fragrance. Unless you just like to wear something really special all the time. I would save this for evenings. I get this very fresh, clean, very pure smelling vanilla. It's unlike any other vanilla note I have smelled in any other perfume, which makes it so unique. I don't think the notes are that unique, and yet this fragrance is really mind-blowing. Of course, anytime a perfume gets hyped up, there are always people who are disappointed and they say they don't like it. If you can smell this fragrance, you have to. Just give it a shot and see what you think. To me, this perfume smells like pure class and it is edible. It's a little bit sweet, very gourmandy, but it's so much more than that. It's a bit more complex. I think it would be hard to put this in one particular box. It is sensual like a vanilla dessert. Tom Ford Lost Cherry, also considered to be an amber floral perfume, but this is as sweet and mouthwatering as it gets. I love this fragrance. It's one of my all-time favorites from Tom Ford because it's also one of the most feminine of his private blend collection. There's something about it. As much as I love it, I always save it until fall winter. Top notes are sour cherry, bitter almond, and liqueur. Middle notes are sour cherry, plum, Turkish rose, and jasmine sandback. 
Base notes are tonka bean, vanilla, peru balsam, benzoin, cinnamon, sandalwood, cedar, clove, vetiver, and patchouli. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't get all that in the base. I get vanilla, maybe a little cinnamon, but to me, this is just cherry almond in the best way. If you love cherry almond, this is the fragrance for you, and I do. I love it. I love anything cherry almond. Food, scent, body wash, whatever it is. So good. And it is a little bit syrupy and sweet, like a candy. This isn't just dessert. This is like one of those specialty candies that you would buy in a really expensive, fancy candy store. Like a candied cherry. I hate that it's not stronger. I feel like for Tom Ford, for the price point, they should be longer wearing. They should give off more projection. I don't think any of the Private Blend collection is that strong, in my opinion. But Lost Cherry does last on me. It's pretty close to the skin, and it's really just a beautiful vanilla, but I don't mind. I know that is a common complaint about Lost Cherry, is people are just disappointed that it just doesn't last on them. And that's really a common complaint with Tom Ford in general. I think it's the perfect amount of cherry. It keeps the fragrance very elegant instead of cheap. It doesn't smell too synthetic or artificial. The almond is beautiful, almost a floral almond. It's really smooth, works perfectly with the vanilla. I love everything about this fragrance, yummy. If lighter fragrances aren't really your thing, this next perfume is a beast. This is definitely one of my boldest fragrances with a ton of projection. This is Bond Number no. 9 Tribeca. She is sweet, she is spicy, does not come to play around. Anytime I wear this fragrance, I'm shocked. I don't know how I'm shocked every time, I should just expect it at this point, but it lasts for days on my clothing and hair. I can still smell this fragrance and it is so strong hours after I've sprayed it. Now for some people, that might actually be a bit too much. You might prefer a fragrance that sits a bit closer to the skin like Lost Cherry, but I know some people want to make a statement whenever they walk into the room. This is a great statement maker. It's an amber vanilla perfume with keynotes of cacao, hazelnut, cedar, jasmine sandback, ambroxan, caramel, and moss. Now I know, moss does not sound very delicious, and it's not. The moss actually does give it kind of a grounded, slightly earthy quality, but really I pick up on the cacao, the hazelnut, the caramel. Wow. It is so good. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, kind of like an allspice with caramel. If you love gourmand fragrances, if you want to smell like you just came right out of the oven, like a baked good dessert, a little bit sweet, warm, sensual, this is your fragrance. And not only does it smell incredible, but the performance is amazing. So it justifies the price point, in my opinion. And at $400 for a bottle of Bond fragrance, I know that is a big statement to make. And truly the best part is as much as you will smell like a delicious little candy, it's still very elegant and sophisticated. This smells like a very confident woman who knows what she wants. She's always dressed to the nines. She's got places to go. She's busy. A distant relative to Tribeca is Maison Francis Kurgian Baccarat Rouge 540, another amber floral fragrance. A lot of people draw similarities between the two, and I definitely pick up on that. I can see why they would be compared, but I definitely would say they are different enough. They're not duplicates. You could certainly have both of these in your collection. I wouldn't even necessarily wear them for the same occasion. So I think they are very different, although you can probably pick up on similarities. Now this fragrance is so popular for a reason. It smells incredible intoxicating, delicious, makes your mouth water, will draw attention and draw so many compliments, it is unreal. Truly is in a league of its own. When I first bought this, I was wearing it every single day. It became my signature scent, which is why it has a pretty decent dent in it. Now I am constantly adding new fragrances to my collection. None of my perfumes have a dent, but this one definitely does. Oh, yum. It's sweet, it's delicious. I think it is very gourmand. Anytime I hear this fragrance described, people say it smells delicious, it smells like cotton candy. 
very warm and sensual and just incredible. I love the cedar. The cedar is amazing in this fragrance. I always get compliments no matter what whenever I wear this fragrance out. And I always pick, pick up on it when I smell this out on other people as well. It's one of those things that when you know, you know. This to me smells like wealth, like money. A rich woman would wear this fragrance. She has a driver and a fur coat. Now I couldn't mention Baccarat without also mentioning the Maison Francis Kyrgyzian sister, Gentle Fluidity Gold. This smells like a very traditional gourmand fragrance, something that is baked goods, all of the ingredients you would need to make a delicious cupcake. I always say this smells like a really fancy French bakery, something exclusive and expensive. And it also, again, smells very wealthy, smells like a rich woman would wear this perfume. Gentle Fluidity Gold, in my opinion, is a bit more understated than Baccarat Rouge 540. However, it just oozes luxury and class. Notes include juniper berries, nutmeg, coriander, musk, ambery woods, and vanilla. It's really the perfect gourmand because it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's a little bit spicy, but not too much. It's warm and ambery, slightly powdery. There's maybe even a crispiness right away from the juniper berry, but it is so balanced throughout. It's very smooth, timeless, and incredibly feminine as well. Baccarat is considered to be unisex, and I'm sure all of the fragrances are, whereas Gentle Fluidity Gold, I think, leans so feminine. Gentle Fluidity Silver, on the other hand, leans very masculine. This next fragrance really excites me because when I purchased it, it just wasn't the right season. It's Minuit et Demi from Fragrance de Bois. This is the collaboration with Demi Rawling. I love the fragrance, but I picked this up during the restock, which I believe was in April or May. I know it was around Mother's Day, and it just didn't feel quite right. As much as I loved the fragrance, I just knew at the time it wasn't going to be something that I would be getting a ton of use out of in the hot Florida climate. But going into fall winter, this is when I typically rotate in my warm central fragrances like the ones on this list, and I know now, now will be the time for Minuit et Demi to shine. Top notes are cardamom, pimento, and bergamot. Middle notes are caramel and coffee. Base notes are Madagascar, vanilla, cinnamon, musk, tobacco, cedar, cashmere, and vetiver. If you're familiar, it smells very similar to Penhaligon's Changing Constants. They're not the same, but they do have similar qualities, especially once they dry down. I think between the two, not only is it a bit lighter, it also leans a bit more feminine. I love changing constants. This was a wow, oh my gosh, have to have it moment the first time I visited a Penhaligon's counter. So I kind of thought I was going to like the Minuit Ademi whenever I started to see reviews or see read comments of people saying that it smells similar to changing constants. I thought, okay, this is a safe bet. It is so beautiful, really good. Mm. Definitely smells like caramel, creaminess. A little tobacco, but not too much. I think this is a date night fragrance on a man or a woman. Date night, special occasion. And it's very warm and sensual, kind of sitting by the fireplace, getting cuddled up on the couch. Very intimate and perfect for fall winter. Just smell like a delicious caramel cookie. So good, so yummy. And as soon as it does cool down a little bit, which might be a couple months, hopefully sooner than later, I will absolutely work this into my rotation. It's really special. Next, we have Angel Share by Killian. This was one of my favorite fragrance discoveries last year. It launched in 2020. It's part of the Liqueurs collection, which is why the bottle sort of looks like a rocks glass which I think is really cool. It definitely stands out. Pretty genius. And Angel Share launched at the same time as Roses on Ice, which I didn't really love. I didn't pick up a lot of rose. A bit more masculine than I expected, kind of like a gin and tonic. 
not great, not for me. But Angel Share, this was smooth and sensual and delicious, so gourmand. I loved it the first time I sprayed it, and I remember trying it on my arm, but it was sold out everywhere. <laughs> so eventually I was able to get my hands on the bottle. I have heard from quite a few people who say they were really disappointed in this, they did not like it. Now that I had such a disappointing experience with the vanilla diorama, I kind of get it. I definitely understand this type of fragrance, this style, isn't going to be right for everybody. The top note is cognac, middle notes are cinnamon, tonka bean, and oak. Base notes are praline, vanilla, and sandalwood. The praline and the vanilla, the cinnamon, it really does smell like a baked cinnamon sugar cookie or what I would imagine butter beer would smell like. I guess maybe a spiced butterscotch is how I would describe it. Oh, so good. Mmm. See, I love this. The top note is cognac, but it's not too heavy. It's not too boozy. That vanilla diorama was so harsh. Like It truly smelled like a shot of rum. Like a shot of Captain Morgan. It just did not work well with my nose. I was very turned off by it. But with this, I think it's very pleasant. It just goes to show you. Fragrance is so personal. I know plenty of people really liked that fragrance. A lot of people dislike this one. Our noses are all different. And there really aren't similarities. I'm not comparing them for any specific reason. But when I think of that style of fragrance... This is what comes to mind as being a great example. I think Killian did it perfectly. Whereas I think Dior sort of came up short. Mm -mm -mm. This smells not even like fall, a little bit like fall, certainly, but this smells like winter holidays when all of the family's over and you're doing a lot of baking, eating desserts, and just the merriment of the season. You know, it's not just the food aspect, but it's almost like mom's kitchen. It's still elegant and sophisticated, however, I think this it has more of a mass appeal. It's not really snobby. And I feel the same way about Ojan from Parfum de Marly. This is like a festive occasion, holiday party, just Christmas in a bottle. This one has some honey, it's a little bit spicier, sort of like a warm, fresh-baked apple pie straight out of the oven. All of the most delicious, decadent desserts you can imagine rolled into one beautiful bottle. Oh, it's so nice. Mmm, I love this so much. Such a hidden gem because it is unisex and it says that on their website. But it comes in the men's packaging, so if you do have a Parfum de Marly counter in your department store, this is going to be on the men's side. I guess at my local Nordstrom, the men's department and the women's were completely separated, like opposite sides of the room. Maybe in most stores, they are side by side. I'm not sure what the layout will be, but in some cases, it might be very difficult for women to find this. I don't know if anybody's going to lead you in that direction, but I think this is very feminine and strong and powerful and confidence boosting and heavenly. This is the type of fragrance that I would want to wear to a holiday party. Mmm, all dressed up, going out with friends, being sociable. This is not a stay at home and cuddle with your partner on the couch type of fragrance. Of course, you could because it smells that delicious, but it's kind of spicy, it's kind of lively. This fragrance has a personality. It needs to be smelled by a large number of people. It needs to be appreciated. Oh, but it's so good. And the dry down is incredible. It's so smooth, has great longevity. And I always look forward to wearing this fragrance. And the very last fragrance I have here to talk about is a beast. I wasn't sure what order to put these in. I knew I wanted to start with the transitional fragrances since we are technically, I believe, still in summer. But then after that, after the first few, it was kind of hard to decide, but I knew I wanted to save this for last, not because it's the best, but because it is the boldest, hands down the most powerful. If you love a fragrance that projects, has insane sillage, will last for hours and hours on your skin, 
You want people to smell you. I'm talking about six foot social distancing type of radius. Montal Paris Arabian's Tonka. It is very strong, very powerful. A little bit is truly all you need. I had a bit of a wild ride with this fragrance. I had purchased the Discovery set, which I think is such a genius idea. And I went through all of them and I found so many that I really liked. But Arabian's Tonka was the only fragrance that I said, no, absolutely not. <laughs> that was my first impression of this fragrance was absolutely not. Kept smelling, kept smelling, and it just grew on me instantly. And by the end of the night, I was just blown away. And truly, it kind of overpowers everything. In fact, even, I think yesterday, I was testing a couple fragrances on my hand. I sprayed Sandal Sun over here, Arabian's Tonka over here. The only thing I could smell was Arabian's Tonka. It doesn't matter what you layer, what you spray with this fragrance, this always comes out on top. It launched in 2019. Top notes are saffron and bergamot. Middle notes are oud and Bulgarian rose. Base notes are sugarcane, tonka bean, amber, white musk, and oak moss. Now I really like it when I first spray it. The one complaint I have about Montal, I don't mind this bottle. I think the can is pretty cool. It's very different but it's very drippy and I feel like every time I spray it, it just kind of shoots out the mist, the juice. And like just now it kind of dripped out of the top. It's not just this one, my Rose's Musk does the same thing. Not a terrible thing, it shoots you with a ton of fragrance, but I kind of want my fragrance to be like a soft little, little mist, to feel like fairy's breath on my skin. I don't want to feel like a setting spray or like somebody spitting in my face. I don't like a drippy bottle and it doesn't present itself as being very refined and elegant. Not very luxurious. Mmm. This is so chocolatey to me. I would have never thought of myself as being someone who really liked a chocolatey perfume. But that's really what I get and not in a young type of way. Doesn't smell cheap and it doesn't smell tacky chocolate candy dessert but that's what i get like a cacao i guess <laughs> is the, a fancy chocolate it does have a bit of an earthiness to it it might be from the oak moss i think will turn some people off which i don't mind because that with that chocolatey note and the sugar cane the amber I don't know, to me it just works and I really like it. I almost waited, I was this close to waiting for the new Kaoli fragrance to launch because I'm so interested. It's the invite only amber perfume. I didn't sign up on the website, I know it is available on hudabeauty.com. Maybe I'll do a blind buy. I think that fragrance from what I've read, from what it sounds like, would probably fit really nicely into this mix of fragrances. So. We will see. I currently only have the Coco Vanilla that they launched earlier in the summer, so I'm excited to add another Kaoli fragrance to my collection. I have made quite a few fragrance purchases lately. They're all sitting right there, and I'm still waiting on one other delivery. It got delayed, so that video will be up soon. A perfume haul, probably. Perfume haul and unboxing. Not a blind buy. I've smelled all of the fragrances first fell head over heels in love to the point that I had to purchase them. So they're really good and I cannot wait to share. But that completes today's list. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. You guys know I love hearing from you guys. Love your recommendations. So if you have any favorite gourmand perfumes, anything that smells delicious, warm, central, makes your mouth water, makes you melt, Drop them down in the comment section so we can read all of your recommendations. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.